in the dark, mysterious South Pacific Ocean, a magnificent yacht is carrying its passengers and crew on a strange cruise. Jerry Hall has joined Mrs. Gregory and Captain Bradford on the Gregory yacht to aid in the search for Mrs. Gregory's little girl. Lost at sea when a baby, the girl has been reported living on a mysterious island. The yacht was anchored off a bank of what appeared to be fog, but was not natural fog. With the aid of apparatus designed by Captain Bradford, Jerry and his friends have looked over the fog and down onto the island. It is now after dark. The yacht is being drawn through the weird ring of fog, drawn without a sound toward the magic island. But, but Jerry, how could we be pulled to the island by the same magnetic force that was pushing it away from it an hour ago? Well, you see, Mrs. Gregory, magnetism works both ways. Maybe I can't explain it right, but anyhow, a magnet can either be fixed to attract or repel. Is that what I'm trying to say, Captain Bradford? Well, at least you're heading in the right direction, Jerry. It's a poor electrical engineer that can't do tricks with an electromagnet and plenty of power. Electrical engineer? I thought we'd find a tribe of savages on this island if we found anything. Yeah, that's what I figured, too. That old sailor, you know, who lived on this island or visited or, or something and then got away, he reported that he'd seen a little white girl living here with a strange race of savage people. Well, I'm not so sure of that, son. Remember, we got the story over our short wave in Los Angeles. At the same time, you got it over yours. And if I remember rightly, the report said a strange race of people, not a savage race. Tex is right, Jerry. It did say a strange race. Of course, we naturally thought of savages as the only sort of people who might be living unknown to the rest of the world. Well, we know now that the people who made all these scientific things we're running into are not savages. It looks to me like they know a whole lot of things we don't. No doubt about it. And while we just stand and talk on this deck, a heavy yacht with 800 horsepower motors is drifting helplessly into something we know nothing about. Well, let's quit talking and, and do something. We're drifting into that island pretty fast now. We're inside the fog ring now. Oh, if only it wasn't dark. Suppose... We'll hit the island pretty soon. But well, we're going slow. I guess it won't hurt the boat. There's, there's not a sound from anything. Can't even hear a ripple of water. This water is oiled or, or treated with something to hold it still on the surface. I can see a little light ahead. There's a yellow glow all over in front of us. Nothing we can see distinctly, though. We're slowing up. The boat is barely moving. Look, Tex. Can you see an outline there? Where? No. Where, Mr. No, Gregory? Think not. Just off the port beam, Jerry. No. I don't see anything. I do now. You're right, Pat. Look over here, kid. There's an arm jutting out right alongside the rail. Golly, of whiskers. It looks like a dock. We're drifting right up to it. Not drifting. Don't forget, son. We're being pulled. That, that light ahead is getting more distinct. I can make out the shoreline now. Funny shoreline. It looks so straight and smooth. See? See, it's shining in that yellow glow. Hold it. Quiet, both of you. Not a sound. We're rubbing against a dock or a pier or a landing of some kind. I thought so. And the boat has nearly stopped. It has stopped. We're not making any headway. But the stern is swinging in near that landing. Gee, the boat acts as if, as if it had a shoreline, and we're being snubbed in. We are being snubbed in, and without a line. This yacht is being warped against that dock by the same force that pulled us through the fog bank and into this shelter. But why don't we see somebody or something? Or hear something. Gosh, any kind of a noise would sound good right now. Hey... We stopped. We're hard against the thing on the port beam. Yes, we're here. And I'm afraid, Jerry, my boy, that we're actually on your magic island, whether we want to be or not. Want to be? Why, Tex, we've come thousands of miles to find this place. And my little girl. Do you think we'll really find Joan here, Captain? Like the old sailor said? We're liable to find most anything here. Then let's start looking for it. You better go into your cabin, Pat. And stay there while Jerry and I have the first look around. I should say not. Wherever you two go, I'm going. Where are we going, Tex? We're going to step out on that dock, or ramp, or whatever it is, and see what happens. Oh, boy. Let's go. Steady, son. You go back and tell the skipper to stand by. Tell him he can quit worrying about his anchors. We're fastened to this island until someone else wants us to go. Yes, sir. And Jerry, tell the skipper to look sharp and give us a signal if anybody boards him. I'll be right back, sir. Oh, Tex... 
What do you think we'll find here? What's going to happen? What manner of people live here? Hold on now, Pat. You know as much about all that as I do. We'll just have to ease ashore and keep snooping around until we find something. Or something finds us. You better stay aboard, Pat. I'm not afraid. That is, of course I'm afraid. Horribly afraid. But you're all here because of me. It's my little girl we're looking for. And I'll go wherever you go. All right. You're the boss of this expedition. Uh, everything's shipshape aboard. I gave your orders to the skipper, Tex. Any comments from him? Well, he, he looked plenty worried. And he didn't even say as much as he usually does. That would be only one word at a time. This time he just nodded his head. All right, now here's our situation as I see it. There's no use making any plans as to what we intend to do. Because we haven't the faintest idea what conditions we'll find when we get ashore. Now, we'll just step over on that landing there. Keep close together. And walk toward that yellow glow of light. Whatever you say, Tex. Aye, aye, sir. All right, now. Over the side. I'll go first. All right, Jerry, come over. Now, Pat, give me your hand. Now, all stand still for a second. Try to get your eyes accustomed to the shallow light. What there is of it. I can't see any better now than I could when we first saw that yellow light. Neither can I. And yet, I can. There's, there's something weird about that light. I have an idea there'll be something weird about everything we see for some time to come. Now, Jerry... You walk on my right here. Pat, you on my left. Both of you stay close enough that we can rub elbows as we walk. And stay close. Now, let's start slowly and carefully toward that yellow glow. Neither of you speak until I tell you to. Ready? I am. Yes, Tex. Not a sound. Here we go. And walk quietly. Stop. What is it? Did you see something? No, and I... I didn't hear anything. That's what's wrong. Well, what did you expect to hear? Our footsteps. I felt this landing with my hands when we came off the yacht. And if I ever felt any before, it's made of concrete. But here are three of us, walking at a fair pace. I have on heavy boots with leather heels, and yet... we didn't make a sound. Oh, that's right. Well... Wait till I feel this stuff with my hands. You're right, Tex. That's concrete, all right. But when I felt it, I slapped it good and hard. It made almost no sound. Gee. Gee, do you think... We... I think we've stumbled onto the greatest scientific miracle of our time. And there's no use in our trying to walk quietly or make any secret of our movements. You mean we're being watched now? In the dark? No, no. The captain means... We're being watched by somebody who can see through this yellow haze. Just as easy as we could see in broad daylight. No doubt about that, son. This island, uh, if it is an island, is years ahead of anything we have ever known. And it has people on it that know things we never dreamed of. Could this all be artificial? The, the island, the, the fog, this light? Yes, it could be. And it is. For the simple reason that it couldn't possibly be natural. Golly, Whiskers. Well... What can we do? We can do only do one thing, Jerry. Keep walking toward the center of that yellow light. Come on, then. I'm nervous and anxious to get it over with. I can even see as well as I could. Say, wait a minute. That's funny. What's up, Jerry? That yellow light. Look, behind us. What? What? Why, well, the light has moved. The center of it is... Behind us now. Yes, and if you look to the right or left, you'll see the center of it there, too. But the center of it couldn't be all around us. It has no center. That yellow glow is perfectly diffused all over this area. Then maybe we're not walking toward the light at all. We're just walking through it. What, what if we walk off the edge of something here? Now, here, you get in the middle, Pat. No, no, I'll stay in the middle. You two are much lighter than I am. And if one of you slips off of something... The other two of us can pull you back onto this stuff we're walking on. Wouldn't you think we'd hear something soon? Yes, or see somebody. This has got me breaking out with ice water freckles. Me would better stop and, and think it over again. Getting scared, Jerry? You, you bet I'm scared. So am I, Jerry, but we may as well go on until... <gasps> oh. What is it? But which one of you gave me these? Huh? Gave you what? 
I gave you nothing. What are you... Huh? Well, well, why hand them to me? What? What are you two talking about? Pat just handed them to me. I did not. I still have the ones you gave me. Hey. Hey, now I've got them. Where did they come from? Pat, Jerry, steady now, both of you. Just answer my questions one at a time. Okay. Yes, Tex? Jerry, have you got a pair of glasses in your hands? Yeah, sure. Mrs. Gregory just handed them to me. Jerry, you handed them to me. Quiet. One at a time, I said. Have you also got a pair of glasses in your hands now, Pat? Yes, I I have. But I... Yes, and I have got a pair. But but where did... Tex, what is this? Quiet, I said. They mean our lives. Quiet while I talk. Someone or something... Something we couldn't hear, see, or feel has just handed each of us a pair of glasses. There must be a reason for that. Well, I don't want to find out what it is. Oh, Tex, what have we gotten into? You know about as much about it as I do. There's only one thing to do. Each keep your grip on the other one's arm and put your glasses on with one hand. But what do you suppose the glasses are for? What any glasses are for, to see through. But it's nearly dark, worse than dark. What good will glasses do? Someone handed us those glasses. Someone who made no sound. And they weren't fumbling around in the dark because they didn't touch us at all. Therefore, whoever it was must have been able to see and see perfectly. I think the time has come when we'll be allowed to see our surroundings. I'm putting mine on. Me too. But I'm, I'm shaking so I can't find my face. Oh, there now. Yeah, I just stand still and... Well, it's getting lighter. No, it isn't. It's the glasses. I'm beginning to see. Take it as calmly as you can. No matter what you see, it won't help any to crack up about it. Tex, look. Right, right beside me. They're almost on top of us. Look, there. Over there. 